Um, so our, our fourth speaker, Johan O from RPI, his talk is titled, The Role of the Game Has Changed, ImageNet Challenges Before and After Convolutional Neural Network. Oh, great. Uh, oh, sorry. Could I use the mic? Is it working? Oh, great. Thank you. Uh, thank you for thank you organizers for getting me uh, this uh, particip participating in this uh, this awesome chance to exchanging uh, my ideas and sharing get shared with others. Uh, I'm ex uh, my name is Yuano, PhD student in Rensselaer Polytechnic Institute. Uh, I I have a uh, one more thing that has changed it. It's my title. Uh, so today uh, I talk about uh, writing a history of machine learning challenges before uh, the deep learning convolutional neural network, a thematic note on organizers' activities, data stats, and benchmarks. Uh, many leading computer scientists do not hesitate to point out that it was in 2012 that deep convolutional neural net or deep CNN started, started to bring out deep learning spring that has become new AI spring. It has been acknowledged that it was AlexNet in 2012 that changed everything. Yan Likun, Yosha Benjo, and Jeff Rinton, uh, the three, uh, the three uh, 2018 ACM Turing Rorage in their review article in 2015 on deep learning dedicated one paragraph to AlexNet saying that this report was a breakthrough that used convolutional nets to almost have the error rate for object recognition and precipitated the, the rapid adoption of deep learning by the computer vision community. Even Jitendra Malik, a computer vision guru and a decades long skeptic on neural nets, admitted in 2017 that this paper is the most impactful paper in machine learning and computer vision in the last five years. It is the paper that led the field of computer vision to embrace deep learning. However, it was more than the single report or paper that has brought itself to that degree of achievement. Instead, AlexNet was part of the larger network. It was a participant to and a winner in the ImageNet Challenge in 2012, the annual computer vision challenge since 2010. ImageNet challenges take a highly orchestrated form in the academic venues with a heterogeneous association of data, measures, material mediations, people, and sociality. If the internal history of machine learning would attribute the success in the last decade to individual algorithms or papers that are the outcomes of partly machine learning challenges, then professional historians need to pay attention to these orchestra orchestrations of human and non-human, social and technical, and the assumptions in, involved in measurement regarding representations and uh, epistemology. The orchestrating effort, however, were not always successful. Rather, those were also stressful. We can observe these struggles both from challenge organizers' own description of organizing activities and from the challenges statistics. The organizing teams of Pascal VOC, an earlier annual computer vision challenge, confessed in their retrospective article in 2015. Winston Churchill famously said, democracy is the worst form of government except all those other forms that have been tried from time to time. It could equally be said that organizing a challenge is the worst way to track and encourage progress in a research community, except for all the other ways. But certainly, a widely adopted challenge can be a curse, as well as a blessing. Numbers also tell a depressing story. The number of entry entries for image classification tasks from its inception in 2010 to 2012 demonstrate that it lost popularity. If we combine the number of participants of these two comp competition, the ImageNet and Pascal VOC, during those uh, years, the pattern of decline became more apparent, boom and burst. Thus, a history of machine learning challenges should embrace this painfulness involved in their efforts and labor. 
A history of machine learning challenges is not just about human and organizational affairs to complement the history of machine learning algorithms, but also be part of history of data set practices. Recent calls by historians of computing have emphasized the politics and historicity of data sets and their involved practices. As Amelia Ecker and Aaron Plasek argued, thank you for the organization for your paper. Uh, here I argued with both that I would like to add, add to them that machine learning challenge can be seen as the intermediary structures across uh, different realms of society and one of the core data core standards between the social circum circumstances in the macro level and the training data in the micro level. Thus, in today's talk, I'll give a brief example of how a history of machine learning challenges oh my, uh, would be written in terms of history of organizing activities and history of data sets in addition. A history of benchmarks will be followed and discussed to see how organizational specificity and data sets characteristics have become embedded within these uh, benchmarks. In other words, I will present three themes overlining a history of machine learning challenges. Ultimately, this analysis, of, uh, this analysis will add the historical perspectives to the previous analysis uh, from the perspective of cultural analysis of Netflix recommendation algorithm competition and the Foucauldian analysis of subjectification, subjectification seen in the machine learning challenging participants. Then, um, which events or entities would be historical subjects? Here, my primary interest area in machine learning is computer vision, uh, especially uh, image classification. At first sight, uh, we can find uh, two generations of computer vision challenges. The first would be pa Pascal VOC since 2005 uh, until 2012. It was the first instance to take the repetitive form of uh, annual competition. The second generation of computer vision challenges would be the ImageNet, challenge, uh, ImageNet large scale visual recognition challenges. It started in 2010 as part of Pascal VOC and terminated in 2017. In addition to these two generations, I'd like to link these to early practices in the 1990s that compare different machine learning algorithms at the time in computer vision field. Uh, ferret, da ferret face data and MNIST digit, uh, digit data. Uh, it is of course that these two were uh, different from the later annual challenges in that ferret test was aimed for closed test and MNIST data set was aggregated and tested in the purpose of a single group of scientists internal comparative research. However, these two early comparative attempts uh, can be regarded as annual challenges prototypes in that these early attempts had the same goals of building common data sets and common benchmarks. Most of all, Li Feifei, a leader of ImageNet project, situated their project on the top of previous data set, including Ferret and MNISD as the pioneers. The, uh, she said, the idea of making use of image data sets for common standards uh, began to emerge in the, in the late, late 1990s. Among them, Ferret and MNISD data sets were prominent, which aimed for uh, comparing different face recognition technologies and handwritten uh, digital recognition methods rep uh, respectively. Uh, now we are turning to the first theme, a history of organizing activities. The four kinds of data sets and comparison attempts have their distinctive organizational structures and fu funding schemes. Uh, first, FERRET program was being sponsored by the U.S. Department of Defense Counter Drug Technology Development Program Office from the start of the program in 1993 through its completion in 1996. The total amount of funding in excess of the $6.5 million. The U.S. Army Research Laboratory ARL played the role of the technical agent for this project. Second. In contrast, uh, MNISD was created by a research scientist who were implied by the Spanish, uh, Speech and Image Processing Services Research Laboratory, at and Labs Research Research. This research output not just aimed for commercial applications, it was also already deployed in the products in the market. A system for leading handwritten digit, uh, handwritten and machine printed bank checks powered by convolutional neural networks was in 
in commercial using NCR Corporation line of check recognition system for the banking industry since June 1996. Third, the Pasca Visual Object Classes Challenge had been funded by European Union in the name of Pasca 2 Network of Excellence on Pattern Analysis, Statistical Modeling, and Computational Learning that began in 2008. The original Pasca project was also funded by EU that was proposed to a network of excellence program in 2002 by INRIA, that is French Institute for Research in Computer Science and Automation. Fourth, in contrast, ImageNet challenges did not have any explicit funding until 2013 when such, when such prest, prestigious sponsors like Google and Stanford University started to sponsor. It means that the sustainability of the challenges during initial years was de dependent largely upon the po its popularity. Unfortunately, as we've seen, ImageNet challenges had lost its popularity since 2010 to 2012. As organizing activities were different to each other, uh, but there has something in common in different comparative attempts. Data sets once gained the popularity and then lost it. The Pascal VOC organizers captured the essence of this phenomenon. Data sets have a shelf life. They said, as performance start, start to saturate, a new one is needed to drive research. In other words, Data set for which performance is saturated are likely to encourage the fine tuning of implementation details rather than fundamental progress. And such progress may be unmeasurable, being lost in the noise. Here, somebody might think of this data set for machine learning as drosophilia or fruit fly in machine learning research practices in that its utility as research subject varies over time. This is the exact idea of Jeffrey Hinton when he introduced the machine learning to the beginners. In his first lecture note on the neural networks for machine learning, machine learning course in the Coursera in 2012, he said that as a lot of genetics is done on the fruit fly, the MNIST database of a handwritten digit is the machine learning equivalent of fruit flies. He presented two reasons, simplicity and generalizability. But this use of metaphors reminded, reminds us of the critical reflection of explaining the popularity of the chess in the AI research in terms of fruit fly in the general research. Nathan Asmenger analyzed the AI pioneers use of metaphor of fruit fly to argue for the relevance of chess in AI research in the middle of the two, uh, 20th century. Asmenger said, a chromosome mapping was an important contribution made by the Drosophilus to genetic research, but as mapping tec technique became increasingly routine, interest in Drosophilia stagnated. It was only with the introduction of new wild varieties of Drosophilia into the laboratory and the migration of the Drosophilus out of it that the Drosophilia was reinvented as an experimental technologies for investigating population genetics. But as Menger thought that the similarity of the genetic research and AI research in terms of their relations with experimental technology diverged. He continued, although attempts were made to introduce variation into the game, computer chess continued to pursue the very narrow goals defined almost solely in terms of tournament victories. If we would see a specific image data set as the machine learning equivalent of fruit flies, as Hinton argued, we might attribute the success of the machine learning research so far to the continual introduction of new wild varieties of the data set as drosophilia into a laboratory as challenges have continued. The introduction of a new data sets or expansion of the current data set have a real impact on the algorithm's performance, not just in uh, a positive way, but also in negative ways. Uh, I have here two examples of fair data sets and imaging challenges Mm, where new data sets rendered uh, the new algorithm performance kind of uh, downgraded. But uh, uh, I'll skip this uh, right now. Since the introduction of new data could uh, depict the improvement, improvement of algorithms as not, not significant, keeping the degree of consistency of the challenge also mattered. Pascal VOC organizers acknowledged that these apparently, oh, sorry. These apparently contradictory goals of innovation and consistency 
they said it is also necessary for data, data sets to remain consistent so that they can be used to gauge progress made by the uh, con community. Assessing progress is difficult if the test set are different every time the challenge is run. But if we would zoom out to see multiple kinds of challenges at once, we could find the benchmarks has not been, has not been so steady or consistent. They have become sophisticated as the complexity, complexity of data sets increased. In this last section, I, I will discuss the capability of the benchmark and then address the embed embeddedness of the benchmarks within the organization surrounding and scale-ups in data sets. One of the main reasons why Pascal VOC organizers said organizing challenging is the worst way to track and encourage progress in a research community except for all the other ways might be the fact that the challenge show which algorithm is better uh, by some degree, but it did not tell why. Thus, after challenge results uh, refers to the direct directions to analyze and elaborate, the real tasks of anal analytical comparisons have to be put to the researchers, not to machines. Nevertheless, while this might concern some theoretical minded scholars, Empiricists would not care about it so much. Jitendra Malik said in 2017 article above mentioned, we do not yet have convincing theoretical proof of the robustness of SGD, but the empirical evidence is quite compelling. So we leave it to the theoreticians to find the explanation while experimentalists forge ahead. Then how the organizational structures affected the, the benchmarks. In case of MNISD, there are one primary indicator of measurement and four minor ones. Uh, this is uh, regarding the primary measurement, performance by 27 methods from 11 different approaches were measured to each other by making use of the error rates on the test set. Uh, this demonstrated the support vector, vector machine or SVM and the LNF4, Reconnaitor's version of the CNM, Convolutional Neural Network, showed the best performances. In addition to error rate, four or supplementary measures were calculated about the sum method that showed the satisfying error rate. Here, setting aside the first two, I'd like to focus on the last two measures. The third measure was the number of the multiplier accumulate operations necessary for the recognition of a single size normalized image for each method. And the fourth uh, minor factor was memory requirements measured in terms of the number of the variables that needed to be stored. While almost every figures were identical uh, or very similar to uh, between these third and fourth measures. Uh, mm, oh, sorry. A memory required by real net method provided drastic decrease uh, compared to the number of operations uh, compared to the the SVM. It was because the convolutional neural networks constrained the variety of weights in the way that units in a layers of organized in planes within which all the units share the same set of weights. These additional measures gave the good reason for the conclusion that RONE was more suitable than SVM to be implemented, even though both showed the similar best performances in terms of the error rate. I'll keep this skip, okay. Uh, sec uh, okay. And then how about data set that affected our uh, benchmarks? In its initial two years, Pascal VOC used ROC cards for true positive and uh, false positive as its benchmarks uh, when the number of their classification category was four and 10, respectively. But in 2007, the number of categories increased to 20 and remained the same until 2012. Since 2007, the single figure uh, average precision were preferred and precision liquor carbs replaced ROC cards. Image challenge used only single figure to measure different methods, the error rate. It was mainly because the number of the category became 1,000, so that it would not be realistic to compare 1,000 column entries or 1,000 precision car liquor carbs to each other at once. Instead, the classification performances over the whole 1,000 categories were transformed into single figure uh, by taking average, uh, being assigned to uh, the method that generated the classification result. Uh, 
uh, let me summarize. Writing a history of uh, machine learning challenges would provide us with a way to put together a history of human labor in organizational settings, history of data set practices, and history of benchmarks. Uh, and I have uh, two more thoughts about the uh, more kind of some explorative areas, but just skip this. Thank you.